And welcome to The Verdict. We're sure glad you're with us this Sunday morning again. As you can tell, uh, Mick Cornett is not here with us this week, but we'll be back in a couple of weeks or so. Uh, he sends his regards, by the way. Uh, today we're going to take on a subject we have not talked about in over 600 shows that we've done, uh, and that is an organization, a nationwide organization of lawyers called the American Bar Association. I know m most of you have probably heard of it. You may or may not know much about it, but today we're going to explore that organization uh, with someone who knows an awful lot about it, uh, my partner Jimmy Goodman, who is the Oklahoma delegate uh, to the American Bar Association House of Delegates. And he's going to tell us about what the organization does, what it does uh, uh, to protect clients, what it does to protect uh, the safety of uh, sensitive information uh, and the like, and uh, to promote the administration of justice. So uh, we're going to take a little break right now for some commercials, but when we come back, I'll be pleased to introduce to you my partner, Jimmy Goodman, and we'll talk about the ABA, what's it all about. You're watching The Verdict. reasons why I moved to Rockaway is because it's such a diverse culture and different ethnicities and my camera has opened some doors to really meet people that I probably wouldn't have gotten to meet without it. I'm Beth Perkins, I'm a professional photographer and I'm Chickasaw. It came in as like a mini tidal wave. Everything sustainable was had just disappeared in one swoop and I just underestimated this power and I realized really how little we are in this whole scheme of things and how quickly things can go bad. My community is still rebuilding. And for them to just show up out of the blue and just start clearing out my house was, I don't, I'm not one that likes to ask for help. <laughs> so um, for someone to come and do that for me was, it was really touching and humbling. I've thought about the history of the Chicksaws and what they went through as far as relocating and losing their homes and having to rebuild and to thrive in the end after all of that is just a true testament to the Chicksaw strength. And I try and draw from that and remember that that's a part of who I am. See more stories about the Chickasaw people at ProfilesOfANation.com. People have been talking about energy independence for a long time. It's always been popular, but today it's possible. We have an enormous supply of oil and gas in the United States, much more than we thought just a few years ago. New technology, massive new discoveries, largely made by Oklahoma companies. It literally changes everything. And Oklahoma is leading the charge. Go watch this video to see why. Energy independence starts with us. Welcome back. Kent Myers here with The Verdict this Sunday morning. And as I told you in the opening segment, we're really pleased today to welcome as our guest a partner of mine and a friend of mine for 40 years or more. We'll, we're trying not to count. Uh, his name is Jimmy Goodman. Uh, Jimmy is a trial lawyer with the uh, Oklahoma City and Tulsa law firm of uh, Crow and Dunleavy. He and I have been partners for many years. He is the Oklahoma delegate uh, to the American Bar Association House of Delegates, which is an elective position elected by the lawyers of the state of Oklahoma who are members of the ABA. Jimmy did his undergraduate work at the University of Oklahoma, did his uh, law work at Stanford Law School where he graduated uh, with honors. Uh, he's been active uh, in all activities of the American Bar and local bar associations, uh, uh, garnering many uh, nice accolades and awards for his pro bono service with the Legal Aid Society and a lot of other uh, worthwhile causes. Jimmy's very free with his time and very generous to uh, spread around his knowledge and help to others who may need it. Uh, he uh, is, has held all the leadership positions there are at our law firm uh, and uh, continues to serve uh, in a leadership capacity with us. Uh, since 2005, he has been the ABA uh, delegate from Oklahoma, and so I'm very pleased today to welcome to the set of the verdict with my thanks, Jimmy Goodman. 
Well, thanks. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and, uh, and speak with you today about the American Bar Association. Well, let's first of all talk about you. Uh, I mentioned uh, uh, that you do a lot of trial work. I know that to be the case. Uh, tell me uh, what kind of work do you do and how long have you been doing it and why in the world are you doing it? <laughs> well, I'm doing it because I enjoy uh, being a trial lawyer. Uh, I enjoy uh, advocating for uh, someone who's in need of legal representation and making their plea to the court or to the jury uh, and the satisfaction you get out of doing that and, uh, and usually and hopefully doing it successfully. Well, you've been doing it a while. How long have you been practicing? Well, I've been, I've been practicing law in Oklahoma City since 1973, all with Crow and Dunleavy. Uh, when I started out, uh, I came back home from uh, service in uh, Washington, D.C. with the federal government where I was in the general counsel's office of the public health, the public health division of the general counsel's office mm -hmm. of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. Wanted to try cases, came home, uh, began doing that at Crow and Dunleavy. Over the years I've tried uh, a variety of different kinds of lawsuits. Uh, I tried uh, an antitrust milk pricing case with you. Yes. Uh, I've tried products liability cases uh, involving cranes falling over and causing accidents, uh, pig heart valves that are inserted in people's bodies. I've done shareholder litigation. Um, at the current time, I'm pretty much uh, spending about two-thirds of my time doing business litigation for Oklahoma companies and in Oklahoma individuals and some Fortune 500 when they need help in Oklahoma. Um, and then about a third of what I do is Indian law and gaming, representing mm -hmm. both tribes uh, in their legal issues uh, or people that do business with tribes. Relatively new uh, area of practice for Oklahoma lawyers. Well, amazingly, I took one of the second Native American law courses uh, in, uh, uh, that was ever offered when I was at Stanford. And being from Oklahoma had that interest. I'm married to a Native American. All the members of my family are Native Americans except mm -hmm. for me. Uh, so when I came home, I started doing a little bit of that, but in recent years with the increased revenues that tribes have from casino uh, and the economic development they're able to do with that into other areas, uh, it has increased the amount of work that's available. Yeah. Well, I know whatever you do, you do well. You get high marks for that from everybody that knows what you're doing. Um, <clears throat> let's shift the focus now to the American Bar Association. You are the Oklahoma delegate to the House of Delegates for the American Bar Association. Tell our audience what that means. Well, uh, what that means is that uh, there are uh, over almost 400,000 members of the American Bar Association. And like a lot of associations, it has a policy-making arm, and that's the House of Delegates. And it has an executive arm, which is the Board of Governors and then the elected officers, which is like a Board of Directors. The House of Delegates is made up of representatives from the 50 states and from U.S. territories uh, and from specialty represented organizations uh, that are affiliated with the American Bar Association. And uh, it s establishes the policy of the American Bar Association. Uh, the president of the ABA may only speak on policy that is ABA policy. Mm -hmm. They may not speak on their own about what they wish it should be. Yeah. Uh, so it's the House of Delegates that sets that policy. In Oklahoma, we have uh, about 11 members of the House of Delegates. It's made up of the state delegate, which is elected on a statewide... And just one state delegate. Just one. And you're it. Uh, well, technically, I'm no longer it. Well, you were it. I was it until August when I went on to the executive branch uh, to the Board of Governors, uh, and you can't do both at the same time. So we have an interim <laughs> delegate which is our immediate past president of the Oklahoma Bar, Jim Stewart from Shawnee. Mm. Uh, so we have the state delegate, we have three representatives from the state bar, we have a young lawyer's representative, we have a representative from Oklahoma County Bar, we have a representative from Tulsa County Bar, uh, we have two past presidents of the ABA that always serve in the house, Bill Paul from our firm mm -hmm. and Lawrence Walsh who was with our firm uh, that are members of the House of Delegates. That's the policy-making part of the ABA. I tried to do a little homework in advance of having you on the show. I didn't get a lot of it done, but I'll tell you, I was startled by the number of members 
that the American Bar Association has? I think you mentioned 400,000 it, it approximately. Is, yeah, it is almost 400,000. It's sh slightly short of that. Uh, and then within the American Bar Association, there are different sections and divisions. Right. And I think the business law section has 60,000 of the ABA members in it. And the litigation section has about 70,000 of the ABA members in it. Well, is it a voluntary association or is it mandatory? Do lawyers have to join? No, it's, in, it's entirely voluntary. Uh, the ABA was started in 1878 in Saratoga Springs, New York, when about 50 lawyers from 20 different states in the District of Columbia got together and decided they needed a national organization uh, to focus on and uh, speak for issues that related to all lawyers. Yeah. Uh, there were no existing rules of professional conduct, so one of the first things they did was to set the bar on ethics and set uh, rules of professional conduct uh, for lawyers. And then, of course, they advocated for issues that they thought were broadly applicable to lawyers or to the system of justice or to protecting the judiciary's independence. Let me ask you a question. We've done some shows uh, in the past on the supervision and discipline that is uh, carried out by the state bar association. Does the American Bar Association have any jurisdiction or power or authority to discipline the lawyers like the state bar association can? No, they, they of course have the right uh, to deny them or remove their membership for certain reasons yeah. uh, in the ABA, but in terms of a lawyer having a license to practice law, in the state of Oklahoma or in any other state, the ABA is not directly involved in that in any way. Okay, let me take you through what I'll, I'll limit it to a three step process. There might be more than three. At the lowest level um, is the Oklahoma County Bar Association uh, we have here in Oklahoma County and many counties around the state. I don't know that all counties do, but many have county bar associations. Now you're a member of that. In yes. fact, you've been president of that association. Correct. Now that's a voluntary association, is it not? That is a, is a voluntary association of approximately 3,200 lawyers here in the greater Oklahoma City area. Then at the next level is the State Bar Association. You've also been uh, affiliated with the State Bar for as long as you've been practicing because you became a member when you were sworn in. And that's a mandatory membership, is it not? That is a mandatory membership. If you are to practice law in Oklahoma, you must take the bar exam, and then you must be sworn in and obtain a license. It's all uh, carried out under the auspices and direction and oversight of the Supreme Court of the, of the state of Oklahoma. And if you're a lawyer in Oklahoma, uh, unless you're affiliated some other way, you've got to be a member of the Oklahoma Bar Association. That is mandatory membership. That's correct. If you practice regularly in the state of Oklahoma, you must be a licensed attorney, licensed by the Oklahoma Bar Association. Yeah. And then at the top rung is the American Bar, which we've already talked about, and we're going to talk about some more here in a minute. But saying that, uh, I am told that we need to get to a break, so uh, let us uh, come back. Uh, we're visiting with Jimmy Goodman, the Oklahoma delegate to the uh, ABA of House of Delegates. You're watching The Verdict. We'll be right back. When you have something important to communicate, it becomes clear that there's a lot of competition for your audience's attention. So how can your message stand out and actually resonate with your audience? Legal Graphics has the answers. The team at Legal Graphics will work with you to plan, design, and even test your presentation to ensure your message will be heard and remembered. Call Legal Graphics today to schedule an appointment. The readiness is all. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. 
Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. Today we're visiting with Jimmy Goodman, the Oklahoma delegate to the ABA uh, uh, House of Delegates, uh, elected by uh, the lawyers here in Oklahoma to serve in that capacity. But we're talking about some of the things that the American Bar Association does. Uh, Jimmy, uh, outline for our viewers the mission and the goals of the ABA generally. Sure. Uh, the, the mission of the ABA in large uh, focus uh, is to serve its members, the profession, and the public uh, by defending liberty and seeing that justice is delivered and it's equally accessible to all and to be the voice of the legal profession. Within that, they have four specific goals. One is providing services and benefits to its members and it does that by uh, putting on programs, providing benefits uh, to the membership like any organization improving the profession, which it does by continually revising the rules of ethical conduct, providing CLE for its members to make the profession more informed and to serve the public better. Let me interrupt you right there. Yeah. We said in the opening segment that the American Bar doesn't have any authority to discipline members for violation of ethical rules, except I guess they can kick them out, but they can't discipline them otherwise, and yet the ABA does have a role in, in formulating what the ethical rules are going to be. Well, the ABA has, a, uh, has an ability to approve uh, and adopt the rules of professional conduct. Those are a standard set of ethical rules. Okay. Every state can pick and choose from that list, adopting all of it or adopting all of it but modifying some of it as it sees fit. And Oklahoma has by and large adopted the ABA standards. There are some exceptions, but that, by and large there's a healthy amount of the Oklahoma standards that come from the ABA. Yes, uh, you know, I don't know what the percentage no. is, but it's a very small percentage yeah. where they've modified it or have a different rule. Okay, excuse me, I interrupted you. Go ahead. That's okay. Uh, goal three is a very important goal that I've been working on uh, almost the entire time I've been involved in the ABA in one capacity or another, and that's eliminating bias and increasing diversity, both in our profession, uh, across the board, in terms of the lawyers that are in leadership positions within the ABA, uh, but also within the system of justice so that when people come into the courthouse they see people that look like them and, and are ready to receive justice from their peers. Okay. Uh, what is that? that the fourth one fourth is one, yeah. uh, advancing the rule of law. Okay. And that's everything from defending the independence of lawyers and the judiciary as a separate branch of the government uh, to increasing public understanding about the rule of law and then to taking the rule of law overseas to our international brothers and sisters and helping especially some of the emerging countries develop their own systems of democratic rule. I want to change the topic just a minute and talk about human trafficking. I know that you've been deeply involved in trying to bring about better circumstances for uh, folks victims of human trafficking. Tell our viewers what you do, what your f official capacity is in regard to the ABA in that regard. Yes. Uh, Happy to do that. Uh, the immediate past president of the ABA, Laurel Bellows from Chicago, is a friend of mine of long standing in the ABA. When she became president, she wanted to tackle the issue of human trafficking. So she asked me, along with a, a, another friend of hers, to co-chair the ABA Task Force on Human Trafficking. So you're a co-chair of that, of that uh, task force? Yes, I, I am. And, uh, and the ABA, in its mission to attack human trafficking, number one, is on a campaign to make people aware of what human trafficking is. Mm -hmm. uh, it involves domestic, uh, commercial sex trafficking, labor trafficking. Uh, it's not just people that are brought from overseas to the United States. It happens right here. Well, there's an independent brand new task force, is there not, in Oklahoma, just starting on uh, yeah. their work on human trafficking? Yes. Uh, one of the things that the ABA tries to do is to, number one, establish policy. So we were uh, instrumental in working with the Uniform Law Commission 
to get a law on the prevention of and re remediation of human trafficking, which has now been approved by the ABA House of Delegates, so it's ABA policy. And we also tried to get that pushed down to the state and local level uh, with uh, setting up task forces around the United States. And in that regard, in addition to doing the uniform law, the ABA has done trainings uh, across the United States to build coalitions within major communities of law enforcement, prosecutors, NGOs, victims' rights groups, uh, the judiciary, so that people will be able to identify the signs of human trafficking uh, and then uh, take action to help remediate that. What's your expectation? Do you think we're making progress in uh, remediating that problem? Well, I think we're still at the very nascent stages of, of, the, of the work, uh, but uh, uh, we're going to continue working to make a difference. But I do believe that uh, you've seen greater public awareness all across the United States in the last two or three years. Yes. And it's not all because of the ABA, of course, yeah. but I think we've had an impact in that. Uh, and one of the initiatives we're working on right now is we're tracking the Fortune 100 corporations to see whether they do or don't have human trafficking policies uh, and, uh, and uh, publicizing that so that hopefully those without will say, well, look at the ones that do and say, well, maybe that's something that we ought to take a look at ourselves so that we can make sure that we're not either fostering or permitting human trafficking either within our own operations or with our suppliers. You, uh, changing the subject, you have mentioned that, uh, of course, the ABA furnishes services to its members. It also furnishes services, does it not, to perhaps families of ABA members? Sure. Particularly survivors of uh, well, ABA members. Yeah, I mean, actually. Uh, Talk about just, that. Just yeah, just recently, uh, just as an example of the kind of things that the ABA does that can help anyone in the United States, lawyer or not, uh, a book called The Checklist for Family Survivors has just been published okay, by the ABA. Okay, there it is. The, the cover's just been p picked right. up there. And this is a book that would be useful uh, to a lawyer, to a layperson. Uh, it helps them deal both with the legal and the practical uh, requirements of, of taking over after someone has died and marshalling the assets and handling all the legal issues and taking care of the real estate and doing all that. It's available from Amazon.com uh, for $19.95, I think, <laughs> uh, unless you're an ABA member and then you get a discount. I see. Well, that is a service that uh, can come in very handy in, in toughest of times. Sure. Um, Jimmy, uh, you and I both know that clients walk into our offices and tell us their deepest, darkest secrets most of the time. Uh, sometimes they don't. But uh, they share their most intimate information with their lawyer, understanding that that, that, that information is going to be confidential and, and be protected. We also hear all the time about uh, target customers' accounts being hacked and uh, other similar instances. Is a law firm particularly susceptible to hacking in order to get client information by uh, computer hackers? And if so, what do we do about cybersecurity? Well, uh, interestingly enough, a couple of years ago, the ABA put together a task force on national security and cybersecurity uh, specifically. Uh, and it's a problem within the legal profession uh, and, and in terms of maintaining client confidentiality. So firms need to be aware of that, need to make sure that they're doing what they need to to protect uh, sensitive client information, uh, take care of security with their cell phones and their iPads and their computers when they're out of the office, take care of it when they're in the office. And it's also becoming a, a, uh, an international problem yeah. in terms of protecting federal, state, and local governments and other sensitive information that they have. Jimmy, we just have about a minute left. What is, right now is the most uh, interesting project that, uh, through the ABA that you know is going on or that you're working on? Well, I think that uh, uh, protection of voting rights is, has kind of bubbled up as an issue that uh, uh, is facing the nation. And so the ABA this year is focusing on voter rights. And in fact, Law Day, which is May 1st of every year, uh, will be focusing strictly on uh, voting rights and how important that is to uh, democracy uh, and the rule of law and a democratic government. Well, Jimmy, thank you so much for coming on. We're out of time. Uh, and thank you for your service to the Oklahoma lawyers as their delegate and to the ABA in general for your, 
for your attendance and hard work on their projects. Uh, we have been uh, visiting with Jimmy Goodman, the Oklahoma delegate to the uh, state uh, uh, from Oklahoma to the American Bar Association House of Delegates. Jimmy, thank you for coming. Uh, let's take a break. You're watching a verdict. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality assistance and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. You will always be mom and dad to me. We have uh, uh, children come from a different lifestyle, different mindset. You have to open your arms and really do what you have to do to have that child become a part of your family. And if it's more patience, that's what you do. Kids got to know they can trust you. And that's what we've tried to do with these kids. You will always be mom and dad to me. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back. Uh, we really do appreciate Jimmy Goodman giving us his time today to talk about his work, uh, his volunteer work, I might add, with the uh, American Bar Association and all the other things he does in this community to make it a better place to live. We appreciate uh, Jimmy's efforts and uh, he's very effective in what he does. Uh, next week we're going to be uh, visiting with a uh, Thunder sports reporter by the name of Darnell Mabry. You've probably heard of him, you've seen his picture, you're going to get to meet him next week. And in the meantime, uh, get on our, our website, theverdict.tv. Let us know what show you'd like for us to do or whom you'd like to see us have on the show because we'll try to be responsive. For Mick Cornett, I'm Kent Myers. Thanks for watching. See you next week.